Hi, I'm Gavin. Um, so it's sort of come to the last of the contact cameras that I own. And as you sort of start to Google and you look at the contact line, there's quite a few other ones I've sort of skipped on. And so when you get to the end of it, they, they, the last camera they made was the RX2 in, I think, 2002. There's an RTS3, which was a, a huge leap from the one and two that I've shown you already. Um, but they've got loads of features. There's was an SX, I think it was. They've got a swirling feature set. And there's the, there is, there is the, I think the AX, which was their autofocus camera, but contact being contact. They, even though they had a proper in-body one earlier on that they discarded and didn't use, the AX actually moves the entire inside of the camera so they could maintain, because the lenses are so important, they could keep the same lenses as a, opposed to building autofocus lenses they move the entire chamber in the middle so the AX so there's a few other ones there I've not bought them um I don't know I've got I think I've jumped in into the contact range in the bits that interested me and I liked um I've looked at the other cameras I've handled all of them um so yeah so I mean I've done I think we spoke about the RTS1 RTS2 139Q the 137 the 159 the, the glorious 167MT, the funky space camera. Uh, and yeah, so the last one I'm going to show you, the last one I bought, and I've got, I feel like, a really nice lineup of camera contacts to shoot with, is the RT RX. Now, the RX is um, a really clever camera. Um, basically, it's got all the modern features. We, 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 I think we're in like 1990, whatever, 2000s at least, sort of, with this thing. All the modern features you expect on a camera. You know, it's got the MM lens, obviously takes MM lenses, still takes the AE lenses, but you can't use certain features. 4,000 shutter speed. Um, you know, it's got aperture priority, shutter priority TV, program modes, um, manual. And what they've done on this, if they went back... As you remember on the 167, you lost the ability to do the metering from the front of the camera, which is quite unique on all the RTS cameras. They put that back on this one. I think it's on some of the others as well, but it's all returned because it was quite popular. But this has some really funky features, which I, I, I don't... It's like... Um, how to explain it? It's got, like, the entire system to do autofocus because it's got a focus system in it. So, and it's also got a, a digital depth of field in it. So when you look through it, it'll actually tell you if the shot's in focus. Um, not through the you know, split prism like we used to do with manual cameras. There's a digital display at the bottom of the camera, which will tell you if you're in focus. You can switch it, and it also tells you the depth of field, which is really handy. So if you've ever shot um, like zone focus, the zone focus is sort of on the camera, there's mark on the lens, there's little markers on the top that allow you to work out at particular apertures the sort of in focus area. Now you can do that digitally on here. This sure shows you how much from the point of you know, where, you, where you're focusing, the actual electronic depth of field, the, the, the space that's in focus, which is incredibly clever. So there's two little bits there. It's got that actual focusing mechanism. I can focus. I find out what's in focus by looking through here without looking through a split prism. And it is very accurate, actually, apart from the dark. It doesn't work very well then. And then I can also, if I'm sort of doing a mini zone focus system, I can actually, like, you know, I know what my depth of field is in the viewfinder. It's incredibly clever. And on the back, I've got well, this one. It's got um, a, you know, digital back to imprint the film, that sort of thing. But the RX is, you know, it's a combination of lots of bits of... Um, the, the sort of contact technology. It's the one I liked. I was looking at all the, the things. It's got some really nice little sweet features. It, it's not heavy. It's not that heavy compared to like something, you know, like a big digital SLR we carry today. It, it's it got, um, you know, great metering. It's electronic. But yeah, okay. So we'll have a look at it. I'll take, take you around a bit. And then, then I'll come back to finish off. Okay, so this is the Contact RX. Now, as you can see, if you watch the video about the Contact 167, it's got its slidey thing. 
with these later ones, contact went back to more traditional dials and knobs and stuff. So let's start over on the left-hand side here. So here we've got shutter speed, easy, backwards and forwards. And then all of our modes are controlled by a single switch. So on the back, there's a push button. You push the button in and then you can move down AV, TV, program mode, manual, X, that's a flash sync thing, bold mode. And then if you flip it one further forward, you see it denotes ISO and then CF is, addition, is like you can program in some features to keep into it. Let me just move it all the way back. Then across the top, you've got um, the flash shoe. And then over here, we've got our app, we've got our um, exposure conversation. Then beneath it, we've got the classic ABC auto bracket control. If you flip that, it'll take a shot left and right of the, um, the exposure that you've set on the camera. So you catch it. Then we've got a command sort of control thing here. On the back, you can see it here. There's a small lever that flips between spot and sort of center weighted type focus uh, sort of exposure. And then you've got the, a small marker here that denotes what sort of you've got timer mode on this knob. You lift it up to turn it. Then you've got the green mode. Now the green mode is sort of, it's quite confusing this. Because of the way this camera does its depth of field, auto sort of like range finder type focusing mode, the green mode, I can't remember, I can never remember which way around it is. It allows you to do it one way, either depth, you see depth of field in the, in the screen or you see the focusing one. Then you've got C, which is your, hang on, got it the right way around. There you've got, hang on, you've got to go in the white thing. So C is continual shot, which is like press the button down, it'll fire up, bang off loads of, loads of frames. Single, does that as well. But this, this is where it gets complicated. There's various setups here about how you configure it inside. I'm not going to go into it. It's one of those ones you have to read the manual. Then you've got multiple exposure on the last one. Let's put that back to why I don't know how it had it on green dot. Anyway, so when you turn it on, which is here, very subtle movement, give you the dot. You've got some more controls here. If you press that down, these two little buttons, that's ISO. Okay, now, if you hold the left one down, you can change it, I believe. Hang on, press the left one down. I can't remember how to do this. Oh, no, no, hang on. This is where it gets complicated. So that gives you the actual ISO. Then over here on the other side, you have to press the button in, move all the way around to ISO. So now it's on ISO. Now you can control the ISO up and down with these two buttons. That's how it works. We've got There we go. So let's pop that back. Okay, so there's, there's how you do that tiny control there. Okay, on the back of the camera, we've got this rewind because you can do a halfway through rewind on the camera as well, I believe. I've never done it. And then on the front, we're back again. Look, the metering's back on the front. After the 167 aberration with no metering on the front, we've got the meter button back again, which is what we wanted. Then underneath, Batteries, this takes, um, let me just take, I can't remember which one, let's take, turn it off. Off the top of my head. So many batteries. This is a, one of those weird non-standard ones, I think. Yeah, look, it's one of those strange CR sorts of batteries. Can you see that? Annoying and you have to buy them on eBay. You don't normally, not eBay, Amazon or whatever. You don't normally get them in shops. And then it goes back in there. Now, a lot of the information on like shutter speed and everything like that, we're into the future now, aren't we, with these? It's all inside in the viewfinder. Uh, so you look through, you'll see all your digital depth information. I'll try and shoot a bit of video, stick it in here at some point with that on there. Maybe, maybe, you know, and we can see how that operates. But yeah, so you've got all that information. And then you've got anything else here? Oh yeah, you've got a blackout. You've got a blackout nitrography. Blackout switch, that's nice. And on the back, it's got a, you know, the old date computer thing, um, which is, I think only goes up to 2000. I don't know, um, but it, I never use, use them anyway. Anyway, I think that's it. There's probably something going on here. Do I need to know? Probably the plug-in for the external power. Yeah, you can get external power packs for it. Never use that either. And that's it. That's the rather fabulous contact Rx.
Okay, so quick look through the viewfinder of the RX. I've had to change change teddies. I think that's Pokemon. I'm not sure. I borrow it off my son. Anyway, because I'm trying to get the focusing work on this, this is one of the problems with the uh, with the RX with the focusing. It's not. It needs a lot of light. It needs the right situation to do the focusing. I basically use a split prism on this, but it's so nice to have feature. Anyway, so turning it on, and then if I just tap the top, you'll see the LCD display pops up. See the flashing lines left and right, the little flashing things. That's telling me it can't find focus. So if I just kind of just trying it, can you see what's it doing it? It's just trying to oh that might be it. It's a, oh oh anyway it's gone. But there it may be you saw it sort of working there a little bit. The other information you've got there, you've got um, film left, you've got what mode you're in for shooting, like the the spot focus and the wide field exposure mode type thing, like centre weighted, whatever, shutter speed and aperture, not very much inside, uh, really, but there's that bar at the bottom that you can see flits backwards and forwards. I think the top bit is the depth of field and the dots are the, basically the actual focus. I don't really use it. It's a nice feature, but it's not something I'd rely on. Uh, let's fire that back up again. Is it going? It just shows you how far behind or in front you focus or how where you are with the depth of field as well. Hang on, let me just try it. That's I'm in currently in S mode. Let's just move it over to the green dot mode. Okay, and this might be the depth of field version. Don't know. Anyway, have a look at the manual. There's a really good explanation with the CF settings. You can change how that sort of works and what you're reading on there. But that's it. So it's all at the bottom on this. Nothing else around on the screen. And that's the through the viewfinder on the um, Contact RX. So that's the RX. Um, again, uh, I think I said this every, every video we've made about Contact cameras, it's a great camera. They all are. They're all the whole, they didn't really put a foot wrong when they made cameras. They've all got different features. They're all great to hold. They all take Zeiss, you know, Zeiss, Yashica, Adaptal lenses, you've got multiple lens choices. Um, they are, it was a great range of cameras. And the last camera they made, as I mentioned at the beginning, was the RX2, which I believe they got rid of the digital focusing thing because it does make the viewfinder a little bit dimmer. Um, so it has all the same features as this apart from the, the digital depth. But no, I, I mean, yeah, I spent years trying to get hold of all these cameras because they're they are great to shoot and um if you get the opportunity to get into the buying contact cameras i i can highly recommend it you're not gonna you can't put your foot wrong there's no they didn't make any duff cameras and the rx is sort of like the pinnacle to me of what they did which is it's a beautiful camera it, even the shutter sounds nice let's do that even the shutter sounds wonderful That's really gentle shutter sound. It's like a zit. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm going to do a series on my Olympus cameras uh, next. I think that's the next ones to look at. Again, you know, all about design for me with these things. And because I've got to hold one all day. I mean, it's got to be a nice camera to carry around and use. And take great photos. So, anyway, thank you for watching.